kobolds are amazing things. They are archives of the past, moments frozen in time. And the things that are frozen within those kobolds uh, can be anything from uh, the records and, and histories of ecosystems to plants that used to exist and don't exist anymore, the chemistry of the past as well, or the climate of the past. Many ways to go about trying to figure those things out, but uh, they're little time capsules or big time capsules depending upon the size of the cobalt. Uh, but lots of information packed into a very small package. We get a cobalt, we collect it from the mine and we bring it back to the lab. Um, and then we put it in a rock saw. So what the rock saw does is it slices the cobalt into slabs and we make inch to inch and a half slabs from a particular cobalt. And then we polish it down to get a surface that's smooth so we can then etch it to dissolve away the surface layer of calcium carbonate to release the plant cells that are embedded within that mineral matrix. And then we can chemically uh, lift a thin layer of those plant cells from the cobalt surface onto a piece of cellulose acetate paper to create a peel. And those peels are optically translucent so we can shine light through them and they act in a similar fashion to a thin section. So we can survey the contents of a cobalt. Because of the exceptional preservation of plants within cobalts, you can essentially see down to the cells within a plant. And as a result of that, you can reconstruct both the physiology of the plant, the anatomy of the plants that were growing in this time period, which were completely unlike the plants we have today. So that the Phillips collection here at the U of I is uh, astounding for a couple of different reasons. Probably the first is that it's the world's largest collection. And I, th I think it's, it's uh, bigger by half or maybe even more than uh, second place. Uh, I think the, the nature of it being the world's largest collection is exactly what the challenge is. It is huge. It, there's a lot of content here. Um, easily 50,000 individual coal balls. They're sliced, they're, they're peeled, they are examined. And, just the sheer scale and volume is, is immense. It takes a lot of time uh, and resources to be able to dedicate to really uh, explore this. And I think it's worth mentioning that in many respects, this collection is untapped. So our hope is to open up the collection for um, more research and more public use. And so some of the things we've been doing to do that include the digitization of the peels. So uh, we have over 250,000 peels as part of the collection. And so we have been digitizing these collections and the hope is to have the peels available for other researchers to use um, as an uh, online collection. So the Phillips Fund has been important in essentially opening the doors to the Phillips collection. Because of the generosity of alumni, we've been able to include more students in this research. So support has been used to further our digitization efforts and imaging of the cobalt peels. It's allowed us to support graduate students who are working on the collection, and it's allowed us to set the groundwork for future research proposals that will uh, further work in the collection and support the maintenance and the curation of the collection. When you have an archive uh, like this that has all sorts of uh, amazing information embedded within it, uh, that means you're gonna be able to touch everything from ecosystems, um, ecology, climate change of the past, even potentially insights on uh, rare earth elements. Rare earth elements are critical uh, for our uh, renewable energy future. And one of the areas that we're looking to find rare earths in, in the United States is coal uh, and some of the other rock layers that are associated with coal. Well, what was that coal swamp like? What was the rare earth elements like in that original coal swamp? Coal balls are a way to be able to tackle that question. It's those one, these tiny little archives of, of time uh, from the coal swamp, uh, and it's a way to get a look at that. So there's, the opportunities are almost endless. Uh, there's, there's almost, um, <laughs> there's more that we don't know than we do know by a large margin. <laughs>